Thank you so much, Captain Joroge, for inviting me to share the word of God through trumpet of hope. When the trumpet has blown, there is the word of God coming, your direction. This is a great day. And before we share the word of God, I would like us to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are very grateful for this opportunity, this moment to share the word. I pray for your grace, your peace, fresh anointing. I pray that my hearers, Lord, will impart grace upon them. You will bless them, bless their families, Lord. Increase their boundaries. Lord, I pray that keep them away from harm. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Now, today I have a message from the Lord. Before I share the message, I want to say my name is uh, Reverend Dr. Jackson Maura. Uh, before I came to the U.S., uh, I happened to be the founder of a ministry called Integrity for Excellence Ministries, which I still direct even right now. This ministry is a ministry of teaching church leaders and training in basic missions. Here in the U.S., I am one of the leaders of a church here in Huntsville called uh, University Heights Baptist Church, and I'm very grateful to serve there as one of the leaders. I am a married man, married to a beautiful wife called Judy, and uh, four beautiful children have excellent grace, Milele Joy, Eden Peace, and Elgin David. The word that the Lord has put in my heart for this day, incidentally, and I was amazed, it has to do with the song that Captain Njoroge was playing. It has to do with Aragiri, gatekeepers, Aragiri. And I was just amazed, and I was trying to get to him that even maybe in between or somewhere there, we can replay the song again, Captain, if it is possible. Now, gatekeepers. This word, we are going to get it from the book of First Chronicles. Now, the book of First Chronicles is a narrative, is a story. is a story of the children of Israel during the days of the kings. We have stories of who the people were, what they did, and the impact they had. Now, for example, we have a story of a man called Jabez. This Jabez in First Chronicles chapter 1, verse uh, chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, the Bible says that his mother bore him in pain. And his life, because he had been called pain, kind of he got accustomed. His life was very painful. And during his life, he realized there, were, there was a need to cry to God. And he cried to God. And the Bible says he prayed four things. He asked, oh, Lord, that you bless me. And he prayed that, Lord, enlarge my boundaries. Then third, he said, Lord, may your hand be upon me. And finally, he said, keep me away from evil. And God gave him his request. This is powerful. And do you know what happened? Jabez became more honorable than his brothers. Now, what we learn from this story is that um, your life should not be determined by your history. Your life is not determined by what people have said about you. No word from a human being should control your life. You can cry to our God in heaven, and your life can have a drastic turn, a change, like the life of Jabez, and God will bless you. Now, as you read on in the book of Chronicles, uh, there is a passage about gatekeepers, where I would like uh, our brother, Captain Jorge, to read for us. And uh, if you have a Bible, you can open First Chronicles chapter 9, from verse 17 to 27. All right. Uh, the gatekeepers, uh, Shalom, Akub, Talmon, Ahiman, and their fellow Levites, Shalom, their chief, being stationed at the king's gate on the east up to the present time. These were the gatekeepers belonging to the camp of the Levites. Shalom, a son of Kore, the son of Ebiasaf, the son of Korah, and his fellow gatekeepers from his family, the Korahites, We are responsible for guarding the thresholds of the tent, just as their ancestors had been responsible for guarding the entrance to the dwelling of the Lord. 
In uh, earlier uh, times, uh, Finehas, son of Eleazar, was uh, the official in charge of the gatekeepers, and the Lord was with him. Zechariah, son of uh, Meshelemiah, was uh, the gatekeeper at the entrance uh, to uh, the uh, tent of a uh, meeting. Altogether, these uh, chosen uh, to be uh, the or those chosen to be uh, gatekeepers at the thresholds numbered two one two or two twelve. They were registered by genealogy in their villages. The gatekeepers had been assigned to their positions of trust by David and Samuel the seer. Verse 23, they, they and their descendants were in charge of guarding the gates of the house of the Lord, the house called the tent of a meeting. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their fellow Levites in the villages had to come from uh, time to time and share their duties for seven-day periods. But the four principal gatekeepers, who were the Levites, were entrusted with the responsibility for the rooms and were under treasuries in the house of God. 27. They would spend the night stationed around the house of God because they had to guard it, and they had a they and they had charge of the key for opening it each morning. Thank you so much, Captain. Now, there are several things that uh, we note there. I told you that the book of Chronicles is about people. So don't worry about the so many people that have been mentioned in that passage. We are going to highlight what I feel the Lord would like us to highlight, and we shall see the implications of the lives of those people in our lives today. The first thing that we note there is that um, these gatekeepers were from the camp of the Levites, uh, um, the nation of Israel had 12 tribes. Now, the Levites were among those who were serving around the temple or the tabernacle. Something else that we are told, that they were in charge of the house of the Lord. Their work was to be in charge of the gates of the house of the Lord. Something else that we, we have to remember here, that inside the house of the Lord, there were treasures, there were vessels of gold and silver. This position was a trusted position. It was a very special position of guarding the very special treasures of the house of the Lord. And something else that we note here is that these people didn't live far. They lived very near so that they could open the house of the Lord every morning. Now, another thing that you note here is that uh, these gatekeepers were assigned in the four directions the four directions, all the major directions had to be guarded. All the major directions into the house of the Lord had to be guarded by these gatekeepers. Now, my question is this. What is the implication of this word to us this day? Who are the gatekeepers of our time? Now, when we read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible says that guard your heart above all things for from out of the heart comes from the issues of life now every one of us every christian is a gatekeeper of his or her heart you are a gatekeeper to make sure that you don't have wrong things coming into your heart now god has put special treasures into your heart very special treasures god has deposited the word of god into your heart God has deposited peace and joy. God has deposited hope into your life. God has put very special treasures. But if you are not taking care of your heart, you're not guarding your heart, the enemy can put in all manner of things. He can take away integrity from you. The enemy can put bitterness in your heart. The enemy can put unbelief in your heart. The enemy can put all kind of stuff in your heart. And at the end of the day, you find that uh, your heart is no longer having a breakthrough when it comes to your worship life. And we can see this. Uh, I would like a captain to read for us another portion of scripture in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7. We find two brothers coming to worship. This is Cain and Abel. It's a story that we know very, very well. 
and uh, you can just realize that one of them had not been watching on the issues that were getting into his heart. Please, Captain, go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 6 to 7. Verse 6. Um, the Lord, then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do what is but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Thank you so much. Now look at something here. That these two brothers, they come before God to worship. And we find that Cain had allowed things to have access in his heart. He was very angry even when God is speaking to him. He's very angry. And I wanted to note something in especially verse 7. That the Bible says that sin is encroaching at your door. What door is that? It is the door of his heart. That is why even you find another scripture saying that the Lord is saying, I stand at the door and knock. If everyone hears my voice, he will open and I will come in and dine with him. So we have gates into our hearts that give access. Now Cain came to God after allowing issues, issues of anger, issues of bitterness. And, and, and one thing that God is telling him that sin is encroaching. At the door of your heart, you can rule over it. Now, I want you to understand that, that God has given us ability by his spirit to rule over issues. You are the gatekeeper to rule over issues that are coming into your heart. Mm -hmm. You can't just stand and say, oh, I didn't know what happened. That, oh, I went through bad experiences. That's why I'm so bitter. I went through this. Oh, I was, uh, I was going through a very bad time. That's why I'm having unforgiveness. I'm feeling mad. I'm feeling bad. Blaming people. We can't do that. You have been given the responsibility to guard over your heart. Now, when you look at the tabernacle, one of the things that we learned there, that... The tabernacle was guarded in all directions, all the four directions. What does that mean? That the gate to your heart, we have the gate of the mind through your thoughts. That gate has to be guarded. What you think, that is the gate of your mouth. You have to take, to watch what is coming from your mouth. You have to watch and see what is going even through your eyes and through your ears. The scripture says that Lot was tormented by what he had and saw in Sodom. What are you watching? What are you listening to? What kind of things have you been saying? There is a time that uh, Jesus went to eat somewhere and uh, the, the Pharisees, the religious people, they would normally have some religious washing of hands before eating. And Jesus didn't wash his hands. And they, they, they felt offended and he told them that uh, a man is not defiled by what goes into his mouth by eating. But a man is offended by what they speak out. So if you are not taking care of what you are saying, you will find that you are not a good gatekeeper. You are not taking care of your heart. Guard your heart above all things. Because out of your heart there are issues. And these issues, they, they need, you need to guard what is coming in and out. A gatekeeper watches what comes in and what goes out. And you have been given dominion. You need to declare that sin will not have dominion over my life. Mm -hmm. I remember a certain gatekeeper in Kenya. It's a story that is well known. Who was watching over a certain mall. And, and a certain uh, senior person uh, within the, the, the judiciary came. And, 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 and this one, she knew her position. She stood and said, you can't come in. I have to check you over. And this person tried to force herself in. But this gatekeeper stood her position. You need to stand your position regardless of who, whoever comes into your life. Don't be intimidated by whoever comes around your life and allow them just to put things into your life. You don't care what they put into your life. But however, in case you have allowed things or maybe somewhere you slumbered and things got into your heart of good news for you, there is a way to get them out. David, there was a time, the Bible says, when the kings go to battle, 
that that time he was relaxing, just having an easy time, a comfortable moment, and he saw a beautiful woman, and from there he went about taking somebody's woman and committed the sin of adultery, like we know. That's a story that we know so well. Mm -hmm. But when he was found out by the prophet and he was confronted concerning his sin, the Bible says he broke before God. What we need to do, when you realize that some issues have gotten into your heart, you need to break before God. And in Psalm 51, David says that a contrite spirit and a broken heart, God will not despise. You need to break. As you break, those things will go away. Those things will be released. You will be free. He allowed, the, he confessed his sin. You can break and confess and release issues that may have come as maybe you slept as a gatekeeper. You can allow those things to flow. We have the story of uh, this wonderful lady called Hannah. She was provoked day to day by her co-wife Penina. You are barren, you know, especially in uh, one of our uh, languages, Kikuyu. If you are called Thata, Thata, it's very offensive. She was very bitter. She allowed bitterness to clog her heart. But there's this good news we are told when she came before God. The Bible says she poured out her bitterness. You can pour out your bitterness. You can release issues from your heart and you will be free. Because when you release the issues, then we'll have a breakthrough in your worship. You need to release your pain. Pain has, worship has two dimensions. There is the release of praise and the release of pain. When we look at uh, Jesus talking with the Samaritan woman, before she, she goes to call the people of her city. She first of all opens up and says, you know, I have no husband. I've been stealing husbands for people. She opens and she empties herself. Now, it is important that we release ourselves so that the Spirit of God will come upon us. So sometimes the Spirit of God is unable to get into our hearts because we are filled with issues. There are so many things. We need to pour out, be genuine, be real. Like what Captain was saying, that we don't need to, to live a virtual life. <laughs> you need to be genuine when you come before God. In your worship, just tell God, I have been doing blah, blah, blah. I have been doing this. David said, I have been a sinner from my mother's womb. I don't know the kind of worship, whether you are pouring it, pour those things out. And when you pour them, make sure that you stand. Be a good gatekeeper. Be a good gatekeeper. And one thing that we realize in the, among the gatekeepers that we read there, that Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, was a chief gatekeeper and the Lord was with him. Invite the Lord. Invite the Lord. I like that song that, uh, that was being sung. Agera koto teidia kora agera. We need to ask the Lord to help us to guard our hearts, to guard our lives. And if you are a parent, you guard your heart. You will also be guarding over your children and your family. You will be guarding over your posterity. You will be guarding over everything God has given you to steward. And will not be giving the devil an opportunity. So today, that is the good news I have for you. That God wants you to be a gatekeeper. A gatekeeper who keeps watch over the treasures that God has deposited. Maybe in the course of time, because of not taking care of the things God has deposited in your heart, you have lost your peace, your joy. Today I will pray together with you. I want to pray together with you. I want to ask God in Jesus' name that he will help you to stand, to be sober and alert, to be vigilant, that things don't get access into your heart. You are so special, my dear. You are a treasure. You are chosen by God. Take care of what God has given you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you mightily. Uh, I don't know what Captain would like us to do before we pray. Yes, uh, we thank God because of uh, that uh, message. And uh, as uh, we uh, uh, just uh, get um, uh, uh, to conclude that particular session, I want to uh, appreciate everybody who has uh, listened to that message and uh, we're just about to pray for uh, Ras. We pray that God may even uh, help us to guard our hearts, help us to guard ourselves. That is why uh, today, you see, I'm, I'm doing what we call guarding myself. This is, I'm gatekeeping, I'm gatekeeping. <laughs> because we have been told that uh, you need to have mask whenever you are meeting with the people. Yeah, you have to use your hand sanitizer. We must protect. We must take care of this. That is one important thing. You must guard your heart and you must know the people you allow in there mm -hmm. because things can happen. Mm -hmm. So you must allow. Mm -hmm. 
What about us who are human beings? How many times have you allowed somebody to come in your life? Mm. You opened your heart, you opened your body, you opened your Okay, you started with opening your house. Mm. You opened your heart, your body. You opened your heart. Eventually, whatever or whoever you allowed in without even uh, taking proper care and caution, uh, things got messed up. May God help us to be proper gatekeepers of ourselves and even we help others who are need to be a protected that is powerful gatekeepers by reverend dr jackson moaura thank you so much as we get to prayer let's pray heavenly father in the name of jesus i thank you so much that you are calling us to be gatekeepers lord god i pray that you will help us to be sober and alert to stand as gatekeepers to be aware that you have given us treasures, that you have put valuable things in our lives, and that, oh God, we need to rule over issues that are going out and going in. I pray, oh Lord, for the wisdom of allowing things in and out of our gates. I pray, oh Lord, direct our thought life, our speech life, direct, oh God, what we see and what we hear. Give us a thirst for your word. Mm -hmm. Lord, we seek you. We trust in you. Lord, I pray the prayer of Jabez for all my listeners. That Lord bless them. Lord, enlarge their boundaries. I pray, O oh Lord, that your hand be upon them. And I ask you, Father, may you keep them away from evil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank